Hello and welcome to this first lesson for Key Stage 3 Biology. This is all about cells. If you want, grab a copy of this note sheet from the description below and you can work along with me. But in terms of cells, first thing to remember is that all living things are made of cells. Remember, cells are very tiny, so we need a light microscope to see them. I'm sure you've seen one of those in school. But the key thing is that all living things are made of cells. And when we talk about all living things, we can divide them into two groups. The first group would be over here. We would call these the animals. And remember, humans are classed as animals as well. So animals on one side. And over the other side, on the right hand side, we have our plants. There we go, there's our plants. It's worth remembering though that not all parts of living things are made of cells. Hair, nails, the white part of your teeth called enamel. And even if you're thinking about animals, you could think about fur and claws and stuff like that. But these parts are not made of cells. But pretty much every other part of the body of plants and animals are made of cells. So let's get that out of the way. And let's take out a cell from our person over here. We can magnify this. This is what a skin cell might look like. And we can take a cell from our plant, magnify that as well. And these are quite simple cells that we can use because they're quite easy to label. Now, here's our animal cell on the left hand side. And on the other side, we've got our plant cell. Now we're going to do a bunch of labels down the middle, and these are parts that are found in both plant cells and animal cells. Remember, you can grab a copy of this in the description, this note sheet, and you can work along with me. So we've got that part there, and then we've got this dark circle here, which is found in both plant and animal cells. Then we've got this kind of creamy colored part here. And finally, we have these very tiny parts that are actually very difficult to see because they're very tiny. And those are the parts that we find in both animal cells and plant cells. In terms of our plant cells, there's three parts that we need to know, this kind of grayish, almost gray blue kind of shape there, the outer covering of the cell there in gray, and these two green structures, which we're gonna label as well. Okay, so let's get labeling. The first part at the top here, this is called the cell membrane, cell membrane, on the outside of the animal cell and just on the inside there of the plant cell, just on the outside of the animal cell. Okay, then we have this gray shape. This is the nucleus. So they both have a nucleus. Then we have the cytoplasm, which is the liquid part that makes up most of the cell. And then we have these very tiny parts here. Now let's just take one of these out and make it a bit bigger so we can see it a bit more clearly. That's kind of what it looks like. And this is called a mitochondrion. A mitochondrion. And these are very, very small. You would not be able to see this with your microscope that you have in, in school. Very small, but they are there. And we can label these on our main diagram here. If we've got more than one, we don't say mitochondrions, we say mitochondria. So mitochondria is plural. That means when there's more than one of them. Okay, so that's the parts that are in both plant and animal cells. So let's just label that at the top there, both. That means both animal cells and plant cells have these parts. And let's take a look at the parts that are found in plants only. If we start at the top there, we start at the top there, this uh, kind of bag-like structure that's found inside. This is called a sap vacuole, sap vacuole. Just below that, in the gray, that's the outer layer of the cell. This is called the cell wall, cell wall. Remember to call it the cell wall in plants. Don't mix it up with the cell membrane over here. And finally, the green parts, these are called chloroplasts, chloroplasts. Okay, so these are the parts. You should be able to label what's in both and what's in plants only, but we also need to describe their function. So let's start with the cell membrane. This controls what goes in and out of the cell. It has the job of controlling what goes in and out of the cell. The cell wall does not do that. The cell membrane does that. Then we have the nucleus. This contains DNA and it's the control center of the cell. Control center 
and it has or contains DNA. You may remember that DNA has all the genes that are needed for the cells to function. Then we have our cytoplasm. This makes up most of the cell. This is a watery liquid. And this is where chemical reactions happen. Sometimes it might be described as jelly-like, but the main function is where the chemical reactions or most of the chemical reactions in the cell happen. The mitochondria, now these are really important and the way you say their function is really important too. Mitochondria release energy by a process called respiration. They release energy by a process called respiration. Energy that a cell needs. So that's the parts that are found in both. In terms of our plant, we've got our cell, oh, sorry, our sap vacuole, and this contains a sugary solution. Also it might contain some salts as well, but mainly we've got sugary solution inside the sap vacuole. Then we have the cell wall. This is for strength and support. Strength and support. And in fact, I want to add something else. Let me just move this out of the way. It's made of something called cellulose. A very good point to remember. It comes up quite a lot in biology, this idea of cellulose and cell walls. And finally, the chloroplasts. These are really, really important for the plant. They contain something called chlorophyll chlorophyll and this is a really important substance because it's green by the way but it's a really important substance because it absorbs sunlight and that sunlight is really important for a process called photosynthesis so chlorophyll absorbs sunlight for photosynthesis there we go okay so this is a summary of the parts of animal and plant cells and all their different functions do grab a note sheet below if you want to test yourself or if you want to work along with the video. Here is what that note sheet looks like. So do grab a copy. And if you want to see more of these videos, do like and subscribe and we'll get a few more done to help you along with your science.